Hello, my name is David. In this video I will be covering the Friendly Shadow character from my Autodale animated series. Who he is, what he is, his design process and my general creative workflow bringing this character to life. Please enjoy. The Friendly Shadow is a tool used by Autodale to handle delicate or dangerous situations that the handymen prove incapable of handling themselves. Problems arise in Autodale from time to time and occasionally a more subtle touch and a thinking mind are required to fix those problems. Two things that the handymen are incapable of. To justify his dangerous and bizarre escapades to the public, Autodale have crafted a persona around him, a pulpy, noir, vigilante detective, their shady protector, their friendly shadow. I've had the idea to create this character for years, a pulpy Dick Tracy, Zorro vigilante type or old school radio drama serial detective within the Autodale universe, but I wasn't totally sure where to go with the idea from there. It wasn't until August 2019 when I finally wrote a quick synopsis for the character and drew this image. There are certain aspects about this character that fascinated me. A shady protector detective, a cyborg cowboy versus a sewer monster, a, a friendly shadow keeping the nighttime Autodale streets safe. These were all concepts I wanted to explore, and from there, the idea just continued to flourish and evolve. What the friendly shadow was, a detective gunslinger sent to fix problems and fight monsters, was nailed down. Who he was was a real issue for me to figure out early on. The first idea I had was to make him a straight up terrifying and efficient machine, a very cold and calculating machine with a face that doesn't move, almost exactly like the version of him you see in the final film, Gun Down the Adult Freak. This character went through a lot of iterations. I flip-flopped between is he a good guy or is he a bad guy for months. The very first version of this script didn't have the little girl in it at all, just the two freaks and the shadow. It was totally empathyless and cruel. The friendly shadow, still a cold and calculating bad guy, killed the mother freak and took the kid freak to hive for study and dissection instead of disobeying and freeing the child like in the final film. I started work on that cruel version of the film. A lot of the 3D assets I built for the film and a small chunk of my sketchbook was for that version. But it became very apparent, very quickly, that that level of mean-spiritedness, not only from the film but especially our main character, was just not very fun to watch. Instead, I went in the opposite direction. Just promise me my daughter will be okay. If your daughter's alive, no. I'll... Promise me she'll be okay after you save her. Promise me she'll be joining her brothers and not me. Please. I promise. What if this is the first film in the Autodale series to have a protagonist that straight up disobeys? Autodale is a dystopia that brainwashes its citizens with propaganda into believing their authoritarian town is a utopia, and all other films in the series depict the successful brainwashing or indoctrination of its citizens. This is really the first time we've ever seen a character that doesn't care for the way this town works, a character that shows resistance. Not just a child that might have doubts, but an adult who knows more about how Autodale is run than anyone else we've ever seen, and he cannot stand it. 
From there, I felt I finally had a solid character to base a compelling film around. While designing this character, I often drew him with a long trench coat or duster jacket. I just always pictured him with a long black coat. I really was not happy with the look of this character until I removed that trench coat. The moment that coat was gone, the character suddenly started to make sense. Now, without the coat, you can clearly see his arms. He's clearly part robot, but not just any robot, he's part handyman. It was also here where I came up with the idea to have this be a conscious choice the Friendly Shadow makes to distance himself from his on-screen propaganda image. In all of his comic books and films, he's depicted with a long black trench coat. In reality, he refuses to wear it in passive defiance of Autodale. He does not care for his media depictions and actively tries to distance himself from that. The character design itself didn't take me as long as I expected. Some of my characters take just three or four sketches for me to be happy with, and some characters take 50 or 60 sketches and a sculpture for me to finally be happy with. The Friendly Shadow only took me around 10 or 11 drawings to get here, and from this image I was pretty satisfied I knew exactly what I wanted this character to look like. The final 3D model and rig were mostly based off of these three final sketches. With the design pretty much finalised, I got to work 3D modelling, texturing and rigging the character to be used in the animated short film itself. I started with my updated male citizen model, removed the texture, removed his arms and removed his head, added handyman arms and from there filled in the blanks. The Friendly Shadow is half handyman and half human, so it only made sense for his 3D model to literally consist of human and handyman assets. The Friendly Shadow needed a gun. Detectives and cowboys both have guns. I don't like the idea of giving Autodale traditional firearms. I knew that if I was going to give the Friendly Shadow a firearm, it was going to have to be something creative. Autodale does not have bullets, but Autodale does have electricity. Lightning bolts, Tesla coil type electricity, which you only ever see the closer and closer you get to the heart of the city. I liked the idea of a firearm that shot electric bolts of Tesla lightning at its target far more than a traditional Tommy gun or revolver, which would also aesthetically tie the friendly shadow and his gun closer to the terrifying heart of the city, and not happy suburbia. I only drew like four or five doodles of that gun. It started more like a classic sci-fi 50s ray gun and slowly evolved into a more over-the-top lightning revolver. I am very aware that a revolver doesn't make any sense. This gun has an obvious wheel that does not have a function. It, it doesn't use bullets and it never seems to need reloading. But the way I saw it, detectives have small revolvers, cowboys have big revolvers, the friendly shadow was always going to have a revolver. There are a lot of subtle details in the way the shadow is animated and rigged. For one thing, his eyes dilate when he switches from tense to calm, and when in his more robotic and lethal mode, he talks without moving his lips. The girl's not the artist hive. She's only been here an hour. This is his room. These are his drawings. He talks by blinking the many lights on his face, just like Hive does. But my favourite subtle detail about the, the, the Friendly Shadows character model is that his face is not rendered the same way as the rest of the film. His face is rendered without the toon shaders. It's not cell shaded and there's a subtle cracked texture to it. His face looks odd in the frame, which is an effect I'm very happy with. The public are scared of the Friendly Shadow, they're disturbed by his face because they live in a society where it's the norm to wear a mask. I wanted that face, even if it can look friendly sometimes, to have an unsettling quality to it. There are only 
two things in this film that are rendered the same off way the Friendly Shadows' faces, and that's all of Hive's faces showing their connection, and the mother's Autodale mask, her fake creepy smiling face covering her real crying one. Considering that the citizens of Autodale find the Friendly Shadows' na public naked facedness <laughs> unsettling themselves, I felt this was an effective and subtle way of subconsciously translating that to the audience. It's a small detail, but I think a very, very effective one. Ma'am, can you tell me anything about what happened? What did you see? The Friendly Shadow is played by me. I think my performance is good, but I voice every single male character in the whole Autodale series, and I feel the Friendly Shadow has been one too many. It's starting to show. Toys. Such imaginative and wondrous things. I always write this one with a capital T, because I think this is where I'm from. I was kind of hoping that the cycle would never end. Hey, it's okay. Now, I made a promise to a real respectable lady upstairs that I'd bring you back in one piece. I didn't want to voice the character, it was never the plan. I had about 12 voice actors try out and maybe two or three of them would have worked if I was willing to workshop the voice and pers personality with them a bit. But I wasn't. I totally avoided finding a voice actor for this character until the film was about three weeks from release, and at that point I had no time and I just did all the lines myself. I create these films all on my own, and I feel I've gotten into the habit of walling myself in and doing as much of these things as I can on my own. I think I subconsciously will not let someone else do work I feel I can do myself, and I feel the film suffered a little because of that. His voice in this film, on its own, sounds fine, but if you watch the whole series, I think you could definitely notice that everybody shares the same voice. Autodale is a dystopian society that runs on an everlasting cycle. Its citizens are bred to be as happy and productive as possible, they have children, raise replacements for themselves, and then they are disposed of. This cycle has gone on, almost completely unchanged, for thousands of years. Every citizen wants to be pretty, and every once in a while a truly exceptional citizen is born. A citizen with a mind or a talent that is worth preserving, a, a talent that is useful for maintaining the town. These exceptional citizens are taken into the centre of town and are assimilated into what Odile calls Hive. This immortal, biomechanical clump of new and ancient human bodies and minds essentially runs the town. They make all the decisions with puppets such as the Handyman and the Friendly Shadow being their messengers. The Friendly Shadow was one of the citizens. He's a special case too. He was once another immobile piece of hive, but he was given a body and free mobility for his exceptional skill was tied to his problem solving. He's smart, adaptive and efficient, and when Otodale needed a more delicate and thinking mind on the ground, they chose him. He would make a great detective, and in turn they created the Friendly Shadow persona for him. The Friendly Shadow is part of Hive, as a lot of his visual design would suggest. He's just a piece with more mobility and freedom than most. If this smelly bag of 100 year old organs encased in a robotic framework is to walk around in public, Autodale would have to make him presentable. They've informed the public that this character exists through his films, comic books, TV shows and radio dramas. Autodale have given him a very edgy, dark and mysterious image. He's a dangerous figure that should be avoided, but he keeps them safe. He's a spooky shadow, but he's a friendly one at that. 
In his comic and film depictions, he has two sides. A, a good cop side and a bad cop side. This is something I show in the short film, but it's an aspect I would have loved to have explored further. The Friendly Shadow is half human and half machine, and those two sides turn on and off like a light switch given the situation. And he tries very desperately to suppress the more brutal, cold and efficient machine side of himself. <laughs> Autodale's citizens idealise being machine-like. They suppress their individuality and they want to be just like everybody else. This mentality is what they're raised on, and if they don't conform, they're labelled as ugly and are killed. Everybody wants to be like the handymen, do-gooder, peacekeeping, faceless robots. These people wear full face masks in public as a symbol of how samey they are. They all want to be faceless, functional cogs in the greater Autodale machine. The Friendly Shadow is so feared by the majority of Audio's public because, well, for one, he is disruptive, where he goes the norm changes, but more importantly, the Friendly Shadow is an individual. An individual that publicly shows his own face. This is very off-putting to most who live in the town, regardless of him being mostly machine. The Friendly Shadow is tired, and he knows more about how the city works than possibly anyone else in it. He doesn't like it. The longer he lives, the more resentful he grows towards the machine side of himself, and the more he cannot stand the sight of the propaganda spouting handymen. The more he lives on working under Hive's thumb, the more he's learned to care for human beings, and he has developed a lot of sympathy for their causes. Um. I'm sorry. The Friendly Shadow does not want to do what Autodale tells him to do. In all of his depictions in Autodale's media, he is seen wearing a long black trench coat. In reality, he refuses to wear that. He wants to disassociate himself from that image as much as possible. People are scared of that image, and he likes people. He doesn't want to frighten them. I think there is no scene that portrays the Friendly Shadow's disgust over Autodale and his affinity towards being human than the scenes between him and the girl's mother. Oh, please forgive them. I was scared of you too when I was a kid. In all the comic books and films, I mean. You're not so scary in person. You look different without the coat. After the freak attack that caused the death of her husband, destroyed two handymen, and the kidnapping of her daughter, the Friendly Shadow asks the mother if she saw anything, if there's anything she can tell him about what happened. What did you see? Nothing. I took the boys and we ran. We hid in the house. This is a lie. Before the scene starts, the Friendly Shadow finds a children's drawing sitting on the ground depicting the little girl and the freak playing together, with the girl's parents glaring at them through the window. The mother and father were both very aware that their child had been playing with monsters. She does not tell the Shadow about this, because if Autodale knew, her daughter would be killed for it. The mother remains quiet and strong and willing to face punishment for her supposed failure. It isn't until the Friendly Shadow shows some legitimate sympathy for her cause when she finally lets her armour crack a little. Um, I'm sorry. Just promise me my daughter will be okay. If your daughter's alive, no. I'll... Promise me she'll be okay after you save her. Promise me she'll be joining her brothers and not me. Please. This woman has total faith in the Friendly Shadow's abilities to bring her daughter back safely in one piece. The mother is not begging the Friendly Shadow to save her daughter from the beast. She's begging the Friendly Shadow to save her daughter from Autodale. She is asking him to break the rules. Please. A promise. And being who he is, he of course makes a promise that her daughter will be saved from sharing the same fate as her. He disagrees with this as well. 
you're a lot less scary without the coat. This line, you're a lot less scary without the coat, means more to the friendly shadow than the mother could possibly imagine, and cements his unbreakable promise. The Friendly Shadow is pro-human and anti-machine, which is a sentiment likely not shared by anyone else in the city. This is the first character we've really ever seen in this series that does not agree with how Autodale is run, and actively rebels. He's still a tad human, isn't that the point? No, change him! You think we can change him for the better? Change him! Give him the coat! Yes! Give him the coat! If you're at all interested in reading my sketchbooks, getting regular updates on upcoming animation projects, or just supporting me in general, please check out my Patreon page. Full high resolution photographs of all of my animation sketchbooks are available over there, including the whole Autodale series. Thank you so much for watching everyone, next week I'll be covering Hive. Special thanks to Liz Lizzie Lizard, Ryan Turpin, Bugabean, Brooke Watson, Ashley, Ninja of Orthank, Sam Melson, George Story, Guardian of Energy, Triskelios, Jordan, Knight of Trousers, Thomas Woderick, Hosey Miguel Picasso, Sabrina Kay, Fatima Hernandez, Mr. Badonkadonk, Happy Purple Bird, Clayton Sonnerberg, Matthew Bailey, Chad Thurman, Evan Vernon, Courtney Sarton, V.I., Walter Slavnov, Carly Tanz, Megan Ruggiero, Sean Claude Paquin, Caleb Priestner, Devin Miner, I'm Not Alex, Harry Evett, Neil Patterson, Maxwell, Kenneth Mundy, Dick Dog, Kane Cruz, Jay Wright, Luke Scrim, Made in a Madness, Matt Dijon, Andrew Pearson, Pepper Blackburn, Cage Danish, Grotesque Wombat, Oni Chan, RCNFL, Toby Harkima, Landy K. Hayes, Chad Burn Smith, Day Snyder, Mentat Junkie, Butter Plant, Clara Bettina Berman, Major Kickass Last, To Angry Zeno, Jay, Frederick Henry, The Cthulhu Kid, Shout Out to Nathan, Michelle Barrera, LB Jero, Oscar the Man 18, Chris Botkin, Josh Foti, Twilight Sky 15, Beryl O'Brien, Arian Wen Morton, Potato Therapist, Chronos Skies, Victor Victor, Trudes, Lord Shepherd, Juju Katz, Mark White, Hannah Knott, Austin House, Nicholas T. Rice, Organised Chaos, Rogue Blade, Jackie Winters, YT Tuga, Emmy, Brittany Garcia, Mark Wickerman, GNL, Indie Ref 2 Electric Boogaloo, David Mizick, Serene, Michael Fontana, Valentino Levin, Monty Treat, Michael Wilkinson, Adam Quinton Colley, Minoru 389, Marshall Dickamore, Vesper, Ellie the Fabulous, Chaka, Tristina Ray, I is They, and Grinny. Wow. Jesus, that's real humbling. Thank you very much. <laughs>